obviously you can see we're on top of the roof today. Um, we've got all of our furring strips, <clears throat> which would be our two by threes going parallel with the roof rafters. Then we have our, uh, our low venting and our high venting. And now we're installing the plywood on the roof so the roofers can actually get their underlayment on along with the roofing material. Um, right now though, if you can see, we are having it, we got a cut around that pipe that's sitting right there. Um, sometimes they're difficult to cut, but we are trying our best to get that because it's also not only a hole, but it's on the that 412 pitch that we have to match. And sometimes it's kind of difficult to get all that to fit perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure they're doing it right and get up there and make sure the measurements are correct. Let's go up there and take a look and see what we can do. What I'm trying to do is make a dimension. So we got our mark over here already for our side of our pipe. And then I got to come over this way and measure to it. So I've got, I think, let's see, 43 and 5 eighths. Write that down, Patrick. 43 5 eighths. 46 and an eighth. Okay, so those should be my marks for my hole. Okay, and then there are going to be to those lines there. That one is the low, that one's the high. It just doesn't look tall enough to me. But I'll cut that out and then we just slide it on and let it come on down. Hopefully that will work. Let's see how good I can make a cut. Because as soon as I let it go, it's going to slide so down. fit good? Yeah. Perfecto cut? Yeah. I'm good over here. Yeah, just about right. Got that cut. And then what we'll do is we'll use this blue Vana, Tescon Vana tape. And we'll wrap it around there and make that airtight and watertight. So we're on top of the roof and you can see how much we've got plywooded so far. That's the garage we're working on right now. And this is the main part of the house that we did yesterday. And then this is the other section that we need to get taken care of today. And then now uh, we have this issue here where these are not lining up because the roof had some issues or some somebody did some work in here previous before the house was uh, bought and the the roof rafters do not line up but again we'll have to cut them all so we're familiar with that we only got three penetrations one at the electrical line one for a bathroom there and then the other penetration is that bathroom over there everything's tied into okay just want to show you progress just got done uh, getting all the plywood on top of the roof um, I'm gonna take you up there in a second and show you that the plywood is completed and remember so now we have a vented roof deck but an unvented conditioned attic and that's our goal on any home that we build. First off, it's fire resiliency. Second off, it provides better comfort for the homeowner by relocating that insulation to your roof rafters. We fill it up, with dense pack with fluffy stuff in the roof rafters. And then we are venting the roof to wash the heat away. We're in a cooling climate. We are actually more hot than we are cold. So we in Southern California, like to use more air conditioning than we do heaters. 
So let me take you on top of the roof and I'll show you our progress so far. Finally, if you've been watching our videos before, we had a lot of termite damage. Remember, we had to tear off all this fascia board that you see here. All the starter board around the whole perimeter of the house. And a lot of the space seating that was originally on here for a wood shake roof. Now what we're doing is we're in the process of hopefully getting a standing seam metal roof installed on this house. So one of the things that we did for security purposes and expansion and contraction, we installed these clips that you see down here. These are a Simpson strong tie clip and that allows an eighth inch gap between your plywood so it can expand and contract naturally without swelling and buckling the edges. <clears throat> On the, where you see the seams here where they butt up to each other, we try to leave a gap there and that one's kind of big. It's, you know, a little bit more than an eighth inch. Some of them are a little bit tighter, but most of them are fairly good. Now, let's take this roof for instance here, this, this peak. So as you can see, we have our vent, well, this is a, a vented piece of material, corrugated plastic with a bug screen on both sides, which allows the air to flow. So as hot air comes up through this two-by channel inside of this, down underneath this plywood, it escapes up here into a ridge cap, a vented ridge cap. And down below, eaves where you can hang gutters on your fascia, that's also vented. We don't vent the gables, it just doesn't make sense. We want to go high, vent high, and vent low. So as hot air leaves this vented area here, it'll suck in colder air from down below and wash the heat off the plywood, off the underlayment, off of the roofing material from that sun that's beating down on our roof system more than any other wall assembly the sun beats down on. The black paper that you see here, this is a Mento uh, Proclima, a German product, claimed as the best in the world. That's why we use it. It does not fail. And as you can see, our whole ridge is vented, even after the building up. Our whole ridge is vented, okay? Anywhere there is a ridge, as you can see. Okay. So we cover all the venting. The ridge cap will be about 10 to 12 inches wide, and that will also be a vented ridge cap. Uh, but you can see we have all the roof completely done. Everything. Time to clean up and call it quits for the day. Thanks for tuning in. Again, I'm Jason Scheuer with Best Text Contracting.